You are still dangerous. You can be my wingman anytime. Bullshit. You can be mine. Let's talk about winging. Are you tired of taking a flaky number instead of taking a girl home at the end of the night? Are you tired of a girl's friends dragging her away from you when she herself is clearly into you? And are you tired of standing around a nightclub by yourself wondering who's looking at you and thinking you're lame all night? There's a solution for all of these, and it's a good wingman. Let's talk about how you can be a good wingman and have good wingmen right now. Any good discussion of winging needs to start with what the purpose of winging really is. And winging has two purposes, one primary purpose, which is really why you do it, and then there are some extra kind of ancillary bonus purposes, which we'll also talk about. The main fundamental premise and purpose of winging is this. It's to allow you to be one-on-one -on -one with a girl in a good situation when she has a group of people around her. It's to give you that logistical advantage to be able to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation and to eventually, hopefully, be able to leave with the girl if applicable. If you're talking to one girl by herself, you really don't need a wingman. Now, a wingman can still help you in this case in the same way that a wingman can help you with every girl by social proofing you and talking you up. Okay, but the primary logistical purpose of the wingman, the primary purpose of giving you isolation is not needed in this case. And it's also quite possible that having a wingman enter this situation can do more harm than good. So most of the time, if you're talking to a girl by yourself, you're better off not having wingman. Now, if you look at a situation where you're with a group of girls that's bigger than two, you're with three girls, four girls, five girls, something like that. Now, it is possible that your wingman could come in and hold the attention of three or four girls all night while you're able to talk to their friends, but that's a very, very hard thing to do. And it's also not really necessary because those girls can also talk amongst themselves. So it's a situation where a wingman could fuck up in a lot of ways, he could get in the way in a lot of ways, and he's not doing something that wouldn't happen organically if the friend group just already liked you. Also in that setting, you might actually lose out by having a wingman because at the end of the night, if you haven't talked to the friends sufficiently, they're gonna be a lot more protective of their friend. Whereas if you've actually talked to them yourself and spent some time with them, it actually can be overall beneficial to you. So that brings us to the main singular purpose of having wingman which is when girls are out in groups of two. See, when you're talking to girls in groups of two, you would like to talk to this girl over here you're interested in and be able to have an intimate conversation. But at the same time, you can never exclude this girl because she'll get bored or annoyed and her friend will feel bad for excluding her. And at the same time, she's likely to be somewhat protective of her friends. And if the conversation gets too sexual, she may jump in, she may interfere, etc. She also may feel annoyed or left out or emotionally hurt or jealous, which can all lead to her interfering. On the other hand, if she has a cute guy to talk to also, that can be much better. And in fact, in that case, she may even, because she likes your friends, want her friends to hook up with you, and it can become a glorious scenario that just works out for everybody. So fundamentally, the purpose of having a wingman is to deal with groups of two. Now it is actually possible, say you have a group of three, to have two wingmen and have three guys on a group of three. However, as the numbers get bigger, it gets exponentially harder for things to work out. So let's say that for example, you're pretty good at game and one time out of 10, you're gonna get the girl to like you and wanna go home with you. And then your wingman's pretty good at game and one time out of 10, he's gonna get his girl to like him and wanna go home with him. Now you have a one in 100 chance right? Um, it's actually higher than that because independently when, when one girl likes you, it's more likely her friend's going to like your wing and they do feed off each other. So it's actually a lot higher than that, but just go with me for this. Now you add a third guy in there and now you go one in 10, one in a hundred, one in a thousand. The point is that every additional guy who has to have a good set for you to succeed, it does get exponentially harder. So it is actually possible to have a group of three on three. And if and when you do have that, it'll be one of the most fun nights your friend group ever has. And it'll be one of those stories you talk about for years to come, but it is just exponentially harder than a two on two situation. So keep that in mind. Even when it comes to the case of two girls together, there are some situations where having a wing won't be helpful. For example, if you happen to know the other girl is married, well, having a wingman who's gonna be friendly with her might be helpful, but sometimes that girl's absolutely completely fine to just disengage, be on her phone, and let her single friend meet a guy. So sometimes it's not necessary in that case. Also, if the girl's friend has already actively indicated they don't like your wingman, sometimes having him leave may actually be beneficial. So, so it's not 
always the case that a wingman will help with a group of two, but it is usually the case. And it's definitely the case when your wingman has good game and when the other girl is single, that you will do phenomenally better having him there than not. One quick note, by the way, throughout this video, I'm gonna refer to throughout the night as the night goes on later in the night, earlier in the night. I'm gonna keep referring to night game because predominantly winging is a night game phenomenon. However, you absolutely can wing during day game. The reason why winging is less common in day game is because number one, you can find girls by themselves in day game a lot more than you can in night game, so it's not as necessary. And number two, oftentimes in day game, you happen to just see girls when you're out and about, not when you've gone out and planned with your wingman to be out as much as you would have perhaps in night game. Um, but you absolutely can wing in day game as well, it's just less common. So let's begin at the beginning. So you see a group of two girls and you and your wingman are gonna go talk to them. How do you do it? There are a lot of ways to do it well and a lot of ways to do it badly. One of the easiest ways if you can do it is to have one guy go in and start off talking to both girls, engage both girls, get both girls to like him. And this has the advantage that um, while you've gotten to know primarily the girl you're interested in, you've also gotten to know her friend and she approves of you and likes you. And this avoids scenarios where at the end of the night, she doesn't let her friend go with you because she doesn't know you and doesn't trust you. So spending a couple of minutes talking to both the girls before their wingman comes in can actually be very, very useful. In this scenario where you've talked to both girls first and then your wingman joins you, it's important that your wingman end up on the right side of the conversation. By that I mean the correct side of the conversation. So ideally, you want a situation where you are in front of the girl you like and your wingman is in front of the girl he likes and you're having one-on-one -on -one conversations. So obviously, if you're over here talking to your girl, her friend's over here and your wingman comes in on, on this side opposite, it becomes very difficult because now he'd have to talk across and it's almost more awkward for you not to go talk to her friend. Um, and so you'd end up in a situation where you'd have to switch the girl you're into in order to accommodate your wing coming in and that's not very good. So your wingman should, to the best of his ability, try to come in on the side of the girl you're less interested in. And you can signal this to him in various ways. Oftentimes it's by where you're standing in the set, or oftentimes it's by before you go over, you tell your wingman, that's the one I'm interested in, so he knows. But one way or another, you should signal that. If your wingman does happen to come in on the wrong side through pure accident or not understanding or whatever, it's your job as the person who's already in the interaction to get him onto the right side. So oftentimes what I'll do here is I'll introduce him, I'll be like, oh yeah, here's my wingman. Oh yeah, this is girl number one. Uh, this is girl number two. Here, step across and meet girl number two. All right, so I'll do exactly that, right? So I guess with actual names, you'd be like, oh yeah, hey guys, this is, this is my friend Bob. Um, yeah, this is Megan and this is Mark. Here, here, you go over there. Yeah, what's up? So you push him through and you put him in the right position if need be. It's a little bit awkward to do that in the moment, but it's much less awkward than a 30 minute conversation where you're standing in the wrong places. And this idea of who talks to who brings me to another point, which is absolutely critical, which is picking the quote unquote target, picking the girl you're interested in um, within the interaction. And the rule that I live by when I teach programs and the rule I live by with my wingman, which you can adopt or not, but I think it is a very good rule, is whoever opens gets to pick. Right? And the reason for this is, number one, it avoids a lot of infighting. It's really nasty to get into arguments and fights with your wingman about which girl's who's or who's going after what or whatever. It's much better to be on the same team, be on the same page. Beyond that, this idea that whoever opens controls gives a lot of incentive to open rather than standing around, which is good for both of you in your progression in game and also good for both of you in terms of having a good night. So that's the rule I generally live by. Honestly, whatever rule you have with your wingman is fine as long as you both agree to it or are consistent with it, but I believe that rule is an inherently good one. Now, sometimes the method I just suggested where one of you goes in and the other one comes afterwards doesn't really work very well. So say for example, you're during the daytime and some girls are walking right, maybe walking down the street. Well, in that case, it'd be kind of weird if one of you goes and talks to them and walks with them for a block or two, and then suddenly out of nowhere, your friend just pops up randomly. It's like, where did this guy even come from? So in that case, I highly recommend you both go over at the same time. However, both of you opening at the same time is fucking weird. So if both of you go over, one of you should open and one of you should be a passenger in the set for a moment. Let your wingman talk for a little bit, and then when there's an opportunity for you to jump into the conversation, go ahead and do so. And don't get nervous about the fact you're being silent. If your wingman is talking to the girl and doing well, you're his friend. There is an assumption that you guys are similar in terms of social value, and if he's a cool guy, you're probably a cool guy. So if your wingman is doing a good job talking to the two girls, don't panic. You're gaining that value as well. It's not like he's overshadowing you and outshining you and you're being seen as this like lame guy who can't talk. No, not at all. As long as you're there calmly and happily, you're fine. If you start to look nervous and fidgety, then maybe not. But remember that you are gaining value from your wingman's value. So chill, relax, wait for a good moment to jump in. Next point, when your wingman enters the interaction, 
please give him a soft landing. Help him into the interaction, right? If you've gone over and talked to some girls and they already like you and your wingman comes over, don't ignore him and keep talking to the girls. Act like he's actually your friend. Act like you actually like him. See, if you ignore him, number one, that really hurts his value and hurts his ability to be a good wingman. Also though, it hurts your value because it's a little needy if you care a lot more about some girls you've talked to for two minutes than your friend who you knew before who you came to the club with. If you've ever seen girls in the club where they meet their friends like, oh my God, and they just like lose their shit over seeing their new friends. You don't have to be like that. But the fact of the matter is, your wingman should be more important to you than some random people you just met. This is your good friend, treat him as such. And it helps to give him what we call the accomplishment intro. Like, oh hey, what's up? This is one of the coolest guys, this is my friend. Something positive like that. If you have good chemistry with your wingman and you're pretty good at game, you can also do the anti-accomplishment intro, which is where you give your wingman shit when he comes into the set and you, you give him the floor that way. Um, but you have to have pretty good chemistry and a lot of confidence to pull this off. So that might look like your wingman comes and you're like, oh shit. Oh my god, you guys are in trouble now. This guy, he may look like an asshole, he may act like an asshole. Don't let that fool you. He actually is an asshole. No, but he's my good friend though. Something like that, where you're kind of giving him shit, you're kind of giving him a platform, you're, you're giving some sexual tension around the fact that he's there. The other thing that's a good idea to do is to bring him up to speed. If you've already had some flirtation in the interaction with the girls, you can bring him up to speed and explain what you've already said. Be like, oh yeah, these are these girls. Yeah, she, she's a nurse and she does this. Um, she's actually really cool. This girl over here, she's, she's this profession and she's trouble, right? Bring him up to speed let him know what the inside jokes are, let him, let him know what the dynamic is, that kind of stuff. And that will, will help him to flirt right away when he gets there, instead of being in the situation where he's in a flat conversation while you're having a fun flirty one. Now there's actually one scenario when as a wingman, you may wanna come in in a completely different way. And that's when this happens. Say your wingman goes in, he starts talking to two girls, his girl clearly likes him, but the other girl either doesn't like him or is clearly ignoring him, right? In that case, it may be that the girl's unreceptive, doesn't wanna to talk to anyone, um, is just negative in general. And when that happens, another guy coming over might be the straw that breaks the camel's back and might mean that she just drags her friend away. So in this case, rather than go in and say hi to your wingman and open that way, I actually suggest you go in on the opposite side and open completely independently. That way, if the open goes well, you will eventually you know, introduce that you guys are wings and they're friends and that'll be fine because both girls are having a good time and it's all good. If it doesn't go well, you can walk away and you've done no harm to your wingman set. So when there's a situation where it's highly likely that the other girl is unreceptive. You'd still like to help him out by winging if possible, but there's a strong likelihood that your winging could actually be detrimental to him. It's actually a good idea to open independently rather than not open as a wingman. So let's assume you're past the open. Both you and your wingman are in the interaction. What now? What's your goal? Well, you'd like to very soon split it off into two separate conversations, but it's actually a good idea to have a minute or two maybe of time where you're all kind of engaged collectively and talking to each other. Again, this generally just builds familiarity in the group and makes it so that later on in the night, each guy's girl has met the other guy and kind of has some level of trust and liking for them. So it is a good idea to have a little bit of group dynamic. And even if you do split off into separate conversations for most of the night, it's an okay idea to periodically bring the group back together and then separate it back out. It doesn't have to be for long periods of time, but you don't want it to appear to the girls like you're trying to actively keep them apart. So if you organically come into a conversation together, let that flow for a little bit and then resplit it again later. And also I mentioned this before on the open, but it applies throughout the interaction. If at a certain point, one wingman is talking to both girls, like maybe telling a good story and it's going well, the girls are liking it, the other wingman is still gaining value from that. So he doesn't have to be nervous, he doesn't have to be anxious. He can sit and let his wingman have the floor, knowing that he is also gaining value. It's very important to be calm in those situations. As the interaction goes on, there's some other dynamics that will occur and that you'd actually like to create throughout the interaction. One dynamic is to have each of the two wingmen at some point talking to both girls together. It's actually a really good idea to do this maybe when one of you guys goes to the bathroom. Right, so first of all, don't both go to the bathroom at the same time and leave the girls completely unoccupied. That's really dumb. But also, when one of you goes to the bathroom, it's a great opportunity for the other person to get to talk to both girls, get to build a dynamic, build some chemistry. And actually, it's a good opportunity for him to brag about his wingman. It's a good opportunity for him to say a lot of positive accolades about his friend that his friend couldn't say without it being bragging. Along similar lines, it's even a good idea sometimes to switch girls temporarily during the course of the interaction. So again, by switching girls, 
um, each other girl can get to know the guy their friend is talking to and realize he's cool, realize he's okay, um, realize they can trust him, realize her, their friend is in good hands. And also you have, again, the opportunity to talk up your wingman, make him look good in a way that he couldn't have done himself. Usually you're gonna wanna switch back, but you can do these temporary switches, especially with mutual agreement of your wingman, which is something we'll talk about in a little bit. Finally, as the interaction proceeds, you start off with these one-on-one -on -one conversations where you're still all in each other's vicinity. It's a good idea where possible to get bigger gaps to move the girls further apart. Not necessarily for the entire night, but at least for periods. Let the girls get used to the fact that they can be apart and come back together and it's safe. So for example, you're all sitting down, maybe at a booth talking, two on two, and then you and you and your girl get up and get drinks for everybody. You say, hey, we're gonna get drinks for everybody. What do you guys want? You go get drinks. You're alone at the bar. Your wingman's alone with his girl at the booth. You can possibly physically escalate. You can get to know each other better. And also the girls are getting used to being apart. They're getting used to the idea that that's safe. And then you're gonna come back together voluntarily and build a lot of trust. And the more this happens, the more it's gonna be okay that later on in the night, when the girls are separated, they won't be so worried and freaked out by it. Big mistake a lot of guys make in winging is they have a group of two guys and two girls that stay together the entire night from bar one to bar two, to maybe a place where they get food afterwards, to all the way back to one of their places, and the girls the entire night have never been more than a foot away from each other. And now you're back in your place and you'd like to hook up, and it's super weird and awkward to suddenly separate the girls in a place where they're both like, holy shit, this is the place where sex could happen, right? You want that idea that you are two independent conversations throughout the night, this idea that they trust you to bring their friend back. Those kind of things are very good things to establish throughout the night. So let's talk strategically and philosophically for a second. When you're a wingman, you're trying to help your friend out, what what should you be doing? Well, it kind of depends. There's a couple different scenarios you'll be in as a wingman. Sometimes you're a wingman whose job is to occupy, right? You're trying to occupy and keep entertained the other girl, and you don't really have a lot of desire to sleep with the other girl, and or you've determined that trying to sleep with the other girl may actually hurt your wingman's chances, so you're not doing that. In that case, you're trying to be fun, friendly, keep the conversation going, keep the girl engaged, you're not trying to take a lot of risks. You're trying to not mess it up for your wingman. On the other hand, and hopefully this is the case more often than not, both you and your wingman are interested in the girls you're talking to, in which case you should be not only trying to occupy, but also trying to attract your girl and escalate physically and move things forward with your girl. And actually when there's chemistry, this can be the absolute best way to go. Cause sometimes if you are occupying and the girl kind of knows she's being occupied, she may get bored or annoyed and jealous of her friend who gets to go home with a cute guy tonight, whereas she doesn't. So it's actually the best when there is that chemistry. Um, but you know, sometimes that just won't be the case. And also sometimes it won't be appropriate. Again, let's say you're winging and you're, the girl's friend is married. Maybe it's not a viable option for you, but keeping her entertained throughout the night can still help your wingman considerably. One cardinal sin, try and avoid this if at all possible. Do not go in and wing for a period of time and get the girl interested in you and then just bounce because then the girl is gonna feel the loss and she's very likely to get jealous or annoyed or frustrated and that's when she's very, very likely to pull her friend away. So if you know that you're only gonna wing for a short period of time and leave, oftentimes it's better not to wing at all. And a quick word on talking to girls you're not interested in. As a wingman, sometimes you will do that. And if you're a good wingman and your wingman appreciates you, he hopefully will do the same for you. And so each one of you may occasionally end up in conversations where you're not completely interested in the girl, but on net, you're gonna get much more results for both of you than you would if you didn't both make that small sacrifice occasionally. And that's the whole point of winging, right? You need to be doing better together than you would be doing separately. So let's go back quickly to who talks to who in the interaction. I already mentioned that the rule Rule that I try to live by is whoever opens gets to choose the girl they're most interested in. However, during the interaction, sometimes things will happen. Sometimes the girls will go to the bathroom, they'll come back and they'll switch sides and go sit with different guys and they've sort of chosen to switch. So you have to assume maybe they like the other guy or there's something going on. In that case, you may need to be flexible. Or maybe throughout the interaction, um, you notice that you each seem to have chemistry with the other girl and not the girl you're talking to. In that case, I highly recommend you don't just switch on your wingman because you're likely to get resentment that way, but communicate, talk to them, ask if it's okay to switch, be like, hey, do you wanna switch? Something like that. If they say yes, then it's completely okay. But don't switch on your wingman without his permission because that's a great way to ruin a very good winging relationship. But yes, there will be times when switching girls at some point makes sense, either because the girls are actively choosing it, because you guys have decided you like different girls, or because the chemistry is a certain way, in which case you want to communicate. And that brings me to the topic of communication in general. 
Communicating with your wingman is hugely important. If you're on the same page, good things are gonna happen. If you're not on the same page, good things won't. I'll give you a very common thing that happens with me when I'm winging with students or people that are less good at game than I am. A lot of times we're winging, things are going really well. I'm talking to my girl and I've just arranged a way that they're gonna leave the club and go home with us. And I'm this close to pulling the trigger on it. And I see my wingman pull out his phone and start taking the girl's number to, to, to like take her number and leave. I'm like, oh fuck. You just like ruined all this good work I just did, okay? That's a lack of communication. If you have one intention, your wingman has a different vision and starts proceeding with his vision, it can ruin your vision. That's just one example. Other things you might wanna communicate about. Do you even both want to stay there? Or do either of you want to stay there? I've had situations where guy A is winging to help out guy B, guy B is winging to help out guy A, and neither one is actually that interested in their girl, and they're both staying there to help the other, and both of them wish they were leaving. They need to communicate and not waste their time in that case. Also, things will come up during the interaction that may change your view of the viability of it. So for example, if as you're talking to your girl, you find out your wingman's girl has a boyfriend, and then you later find out even more so, he's coming to join them in 10 minutes, it may not be worth staying there anymore. Even at just finding out the boyfriend, it may have been time to bail. On the other hand, sometimes, you'll be talking to your girl and she'll say that her girlfriend just broke up with her boyfriend and she's really trying to get laid tonight. That'd be interesting information to tell to your wing. You might be like, hey, we really want to stay in this one if you want to get a result. So it's good to communicate and you'd be surprised how much you can communicate without it being a problem. You can lean over and say something to your friend and it's not a big deal. If anything, if the girls ask about it, you can just be like, oh, it's a secret or oh, we'll tell you later or something like that. So you can actually flat out overtly talk to them. But if you wing with someone for a long time, it's actually fun to have little codes that you can do as well, ways to to communicate without being so obvious. So I'll give you one example of this code just to, to tell you what they could be like. This is a, an old school code called the vodka protocol that's very useful with wings. And the way this works is um, if you find out some good information about the interaction that makes you want to stay, you suggest, hey, we should all do shots. And that makes sense because it's something fun to do. It's indicating the group staying together and it's an escalation of the interaction. So it makes sense. And when you say we should do shots, your friend knows that you just got some information that says this is a set I want to stay in. This is a situation that I think has legs, we should go with it. On the other hand, if you find out some negative information, you can look over it for him and be like, you know what, no more drinks for me tonight. When we say no more drinks for me tonight, that means like I, I'm, I'm done, I'm out of this, I'm not feeling it. And then that's an indication that he might wanna leave or he might wanna actually consider it or find out the information, et cetera. So you're at least communicating that there's something negative that might wanna sway his decision whether or not to stay with the girls. Another one, just for reference, is I used to have one with one of my wingmen where if we ever mentioned the DJ, like if the DJ comes on or when does the DJ come on or something like that, it was an idea of the night needs to progress, i.e. we need to escalate, we need to take this somewhere, it's been stagnant for too long. So mentioning the DJ was a way of me communicating to my wingman, we need to escalate this in some way. So you can have these little codes with your wingman where you don't have to be like and make it obvious you're communicating in front of the girls. Um, it can be a little more subtle once you have a good winging relationship. So through all this logistics and teamwork and ways that you can work effectively together, a good wingman can absolutely help you have a much better sex life and you can help him the same way. In fact, very few things bring guys together more than meeting girls together. If you've met and taken home some girls with a guy, I promise you're gonna be good friends. But even beyond all these ways that a wingman can help you logistically, which as I mentioned is the primary reason for having a wingman, there's a whole other category of help a wingman can give you, which is the category of making you feel more comfortable in the nightclub and or helping you to just have more fun. Hopefully your wingman is a friend and going out and hanging out with him makes the night more fun. So say you get to the club a little bit early, there's not that many girls there. Instead of wandering around and feeling bored, you can talk to your good friend. That helps. Or let's say you've had a rough approach and a girl just blew you out. Instead of being down on yourself, your friend can like give you some shit about it or like give you a high five and let you know it's okay and just pick you back up. So those kind of things can be very helpful. Also, if you have approach anxiety, your wingman can needle you and push you to do an approach you might not otherwise do. So there's a lot of these ways that your wingman can help. Also just standing around with someone as opposed to standing al around alone is kind of less negative social proof. That said, by the way, I do wanna make the point that when you're in a nightclub, most people are not looking at you and most people don't give a shit. So you shouldn't be standing around a club worrying about negative social proof anyway, but it still is nicer to be with a friend. It, it does feel a little more natural. And again, it's nice to have someone to talk to. Now. I do want to mention though, having camaraderie with your wingman is great, but never, ever, ever should you allow having a wingman to make you worse at game than you would be on your own. And there's a lot of ways guys do winging wrong that makes them worse. Number one way that guys do winging wrong is because you're with a wingman, you're looking for two sets, you neglect all other sets. You see a hot girl by herself and you don't approach her. That's a calamity. Please do that approach. Your wingman can fend for himself a little bit while you go do that approach. Or you see the hottest girl in the bar and she's in a group of three or four, you don't approach her 
because you're with your wingman, go do that approach, try and take her home, but at least settle for a good number. You'll be happy you did, right? Don't let the reliance on your wingman and the reliance on trying to wing a set hold you back from other good things you would do under other circumstances. Think of it kind of like the Hippocratic Oath, right? The purpose of a wingman is to first do no harm and then enhance things if possible. And you should try and do approaches with your wingman, but you should not be handcuffed to your wingman to the point that it keeps you from doing approaches you would otherwise approach. Along similar lines, a lot of times when guys are with their wingman, they don't approach girls they might otherwise because they're worried their wingman will judge them. So if there's a girl that's really cute and really your type, but not your wingman's type, or not maybe objectively, socially a certain type, but you want to talk to her and you would talk to her if you're by yourself and you would love to have a relationship with her, go do the fucking approach. Don't worry about what your wingman thinks. Don't worry about your wingman's judgment. And I, and honestly, your wingman shouldn't be judgmental of that anyway. And you shouldn't judge your wingman for going after what he wants either. Again, first do no harm. Make sure that having your wingman in the night doesn't make you take less action or worse action than you would on your own. Okay, so that was a lot of information, but above and beyond all the tactical stuff I just told you, the biggest takeaway should be this. Having a wingman is an incredible resource and something you should definitely do in your game if you possibly can. Which brings me to the question of where do I find a good wingman? And unfortunately, this isn't an easy thing to give advice on, but I'll give you a few pointers and tips. Number one, share this video with some of your friends and or if you have friends that are actively looking to meet girls, bring them into this idea of game, nurture them along, help them out. You can even coach them up a little bit into this to get them ready and take them out. Especially if you've watched some of my videos, you're good at game. If they see you do some approaches, they're likely to get impressed and want to join you and want to become your wingman. And by the way, your wingman doesn't have to have incredible game. If he's a good friend of yours and is willing to talk to some girls that are not that hot for you, he is a gold mine. He's a wonderful, wonderful person to have out with you in the club. So don't shy away from that. Also, if they're going out with you and you're good, they'll get good. Next up, as you're going out, keep an eye out for other guys that are doing game or that are doing well with girls. And in fact, as you're talking to girls, you will see occasionally other guys talking to their friends who seem like cool guys. Introduce yourself to them, meet them. Don't be afraid to exchange numbers with a dude and don't be afraid to invite that dude out if he seems like a cool guy the next time you come out. It's not weird or gay to do that. It's completely fine, okay? It's okay to have guy friends. It's okay to invite guys out to things and it's okay to accept their invitations out as well. Beyond that, when I come to various cities, I actually do events in those cities and a lot of the guys that come to those events meet wingmen at those events who become the greatest wingman for years and years and years and they learn so much together. So if I am doing an event in your city, by all means come out. And yes, by the way, a lot of my events are free. Uh, if you wanna be invited to these events, make sure you're on my email newsletter so that you get notifications when I am actually coming to your city and you can make great wings that way. Finally, there is actually a Facebook group called Todd V Wings, which you can look at. It's an older group and it's not super active. I will warn you in advance. However, um, there are people on there in a lot of the cities who are looking for wings, especially if you dig back through the chat, you will find some good options there. I will tell you this, if you're meeting a random wingman off the internet, be a little cautious as you would with meeting anyone off the internet. Mostly they're really good guys, but just be smart, all right? But regardless, having a great wingman is going to be a great enhancement for your game and becoming a great wingman will make other guys want to be your wings. So learn these skills. I promise it's a multiplier on all the results you're gonna get.